Okay, so now that we understand what OAuth is, how it's used and its impact, let's dive deeper on how it works and how to discover such vulnerabilities. So this falls under the broken access control vulnerabilities and therefore the best way to discover it is to have two accounts and see if you can access information that belongs to the second account from the first account or if you can log in as the second account using information or the token of the first account. So because this is a lab, you can't create your own users on it, but we already have two users. The credentials for the first user, which you're supposed to log in with, are Wiener Peter, and the goal is to try to log in to another account on the target website that has the email of carlos at carlosmontoya.net. So let's open up the lab and go to my account, and let's test the functionality as usual without exploiting anything. So we're gonna try to log in, and we're gonna assume that this is a social login flow. So we're assuming that this is using a third party login prompt from Google, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. And it's asking you to enter your username and password. So as I said earlier, the username is Wiener and the password is Peter. We're gonna click on sign in. Now, before redirecting you back to the original website that you're trying to log in with, it's telling you that this social login is going to share your profile information and your email with the original website. So the original website is requesting this information and it's asking you to confirm. So we're going to click on continue to confirm. So now the blog has my profile information and my email and I should be logged in. So let's click on my account. And sure enough, as you can see, it knows my name, which is Wiener, and it knows my email, which is wiener at hotdog.com. Remember, I never gave my email to this website, but this website is able to know my email because the third party social login, assuming it's Google, have sent that information back to it because we authenticated with Google using the social login button. So as usual, in a normal pen test or in a normal bug hunt, once we test the normal functionality and we see that it works and we have a good understanding of how it's supposed to work, the next goal is to analyze what happens when we use this functionality with burp proxy and see if we can exploit it and discover bugs within it. So let's log out. And this time we're not gonna be intercepting the requests because I wanna be able to see the whole flow. I wanna see exactly what happens from the point that I click on login. To do that, we're gonna use the HTTP history tab. This tab shows all of the requests that were sent or proxied through Burp. So right now we have the requests that we previously sent as we were just testing the website normally. So I'm gonna highlight everything and I'm gonna delete it because I want to see everything from the point that I used the social login functionality, like I said. And now I'm going to go to my account again, and it's going to automatically log me in with my social media account that I authenticated with just a few minutes ago. And perfect, as you can see right here, now we have the whole authentication flow that was used in order to authenticate me to this website using the social login functionality. So we have all of the requests and the responses exchanged between the current website and the third party website that resulted into logging me in with an account that I own on the third party website and not on this website. A lot of this is self-explanatory. So we have the host in here. We have the method that was used to send this particular request the URL or the endpoint that the request was sent to and the status code and the response sent as a result of this request. So we can see that initially we sent a request to an endpoint that is called my account. We can see the request in here and we can see the response was 302 and as we said earlier 300 responses mean success. Then another request was sent to an endpoint that is called social-login. So we can assume that this was an attempt for a social login, which is exactly what we were doing. Next request was sent to academy header. So we can analyze the request and the response to see if there is anything interesting. But the next one is actually very, very interesting because we can see from the name, we have something called auth, which is kind of short for authentication. In the request, we can see a lot of 
information is provided within this request. Now, since this is an authentication flow, you should actually pay more attention to it and try to understand or at least just formulate an idea of what's happening. So we can see a client ID being sent. We can also see a redirect URI, which is very interesting because you can test this for so many things. We can also see this request is specifying a response type and the value for that is a token. So it's probably asking for a token. And remember what we said earlier, a token is sent from the social account website or the third party website to the website that you're trying to authenticate with. And that token is used to authenticate you. So we can see that this request is given a client ID and is requesting a token. Now, if we look at the response again, it's a 300 response, meaning it was a success. And we can actually see at the bottom in here, an access token was returned to this application. So this is what the application is going to use to authenticate us. So if you continue analyzing the request and go to the request that is being sent to the authenticate endpoint, you'll notice that this request is sent with the email of the user, the username, and the token that was received as a response to the previous request to validate that we are the right user. And this is the request that will actually authenticate us and allow us to log in. Now I'm saying all of this and we're analyzing all of this just to give you an idea of a typical authentication flow with OAuth version 2.0. This is actually not that important for this example, but it will become very important in future examples. And it is very important for you as a bug hunter or a pen tester. So keeping things simple, even in real life scenarios, before you go and try to exploit more complex OAuth techniques, which we will cover later on in the course, the simplest thing that you could do in here is change this email to an email that belongs to another account on this website. So as you know, when testing for broken access control vulnerabilities, you should have two accounts on the website. And like I said, try to log into the other account or try to access information that belongs to another account. So we're trying to see if we can use this access token that we got from the third party website for our own email to log in to an account that belongs to another email. So to do this, we're going to right click this request and send it to the repeater. We're going to go to the repeater. We're going to replace this email with the target email, which is carlos at carlosmontaya.net. And let's send it. And as you can see, we got a 300 response again, meaning success. So this probably worked, but we sent this request within burp. So we can't really see the result. We can't actually see if we were allowed to log in to Carlos's account. So to send this request in the browser, I'm going to first log out of my current account. So you can see I'm logged in as wiener at hotdog.com. Now I'm going to log out. I'm going to right click my modified request in the repeater and I'm going to select request in browser in original session. So this will basically send this exact modified request to the burp browser that I have running right here. And keep in mind, I just logged out of that account. So right now I'm not even logged into anything, but this request is supposed to allow me to log in to my own account. So this is going to give me a unique URL that'll submit this request for me. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it in the browser. And it seems like it logged me in without even having to log in because I've actually sent a request login, a modified request login. So let's go to my account. And perfect. As you can see, I'm logged in with a completely different username, which is called Carlos. And my email is carlos at carlosmontoya.net. So now by exploiting the OAuth flow, I'm able to access a completely different account that does not belong to me. And I'm obviously able to access their information. So you can see the username now is Carlos, even though in the request, even in the modified request, I sent the username as Wiener. But the main thing is I was able to reuse an access token that was sent to me as Wiener and use it to log in to an account that does not belong to me by simply modifying the email to the email of the target account.